I've got a variety of supplies gathered together for this project, including a few different versions of the 3D printed logo, plus the wood block that we'll be using for the backing. This was pre-purchased with the nice edge already routered into it. Let's take a quick step backwards to see how the actual uh, part that's going to be printed was created. I started out with Tony's logo, however, the way that it is in this logo, it's not ready for 3D printing, not only because it's not the right file type, but because it needs to be simplified into blocks of color that can be printed better. So and in Illustrator, I created a file that creates each of these different block areas so that they can be refined individually. And you can see it's nice to have them in layers there because you can modify one at a time. And sometimes it's nice to have them in different layers in case you want to export them separately to extrude them individually in 123D design. And that's what I've done here is I've just exported it as an SVG and then loaded it up into 123D design. Then you can just extrude it up. Now, it wasn't quite right in the eye area. Um, as I was working with Tony, he had some ideas for making those eyes better. So I did go ahead and modify that a little bit, but this is the base design before anything else was done to it with the raw SVG file from Adobe Illustrator. And then here you can see I've just modified the eyes somewhat in 123D design. It's nice to use just a mix of programs and take advantage of the, the easiest parts of each program as opposed to uh, sticking with just one program and trying to do everything there. And now I just need to add a backing because of course we don't want each, each individual piece for the stamp. We want it all on one backing that will be simple to glue onto the wood block. Make it just a little bit bigger than the actual stamp so that you've got a little bit better surface area to bond with the wood block. And then just extrude that out maybe a millimeter and a half or so, just a little bit. And then since I have these open areas in the design, I'm just going to go ahead and pop those out in the uh, model also for this one. I'm going to print a couple of different versions, but for this one I'm going to have those spaces just be open, which is probably going to be a little bit of a pain later on to trim out the, uh, the foam backing that's going to go between the printed part and the wood block, but I think it'll be okay. So then we just need to export this uh, into Cura. Um, and of course you want to flip it over if it comes on like this because you want the, the large flat side uh, to be down on the print bed and then the rest of it will just print upward without any need for any sort of supports or anything. It'll be nice and neat. I've tried a few different settings here for this print. I ended up actually using the very first one which used the same settings as my previous stamp of my own logo. But what I wanted to experiment with was um, different size nozzle settings to get different amounts of details. Plus, I, I did try one where it's all perimeters, as in there's there's no infill area. You just set your um, you set your outer layers to, to take up the whole thing. It kind of created an interesting effect. I'll show you later on. But it wasn't quite right for this particular stamp, but I think it has potential for other projects in future. So now I'm just printing this out. I've got it on print bite, so I definitely do not have any heat on my bed because uh, Ninja Flex sticks really, really, really well to print bite a little bit too well, as I've mentioned before, but it is nice not to have to wait for that bed to heat up. So this is the first one I printed. I mean, I did do a couple of other versions, but this one did come out quite nice. It's not perfect, but that's fine because I'm planning on going at it a little bit with the wood burner anyway, just to get a little bit more clarity, especially with the text. That's the most challenging part to get to come out clear because it is, um, you know, small lines that can get a little bit bloopy once you add the stamping ink and whatnot. You can see it's not particularly thick. It just doesn't need to be. It's maybe total, maybe three millimeters thick, four millimeters, something like that. This is the one that I did all perimeters, and you can see it's just the, the nozzle was going round and round each shape until it was mostly filled. And it did leave some little gaps, which I think will be interesting uh, stamping, but maybe not quite exactly right for this particular project. You'll see there's some, even just little gaps here that you wouldn't want for something that you needed to be structurally strong, but for a stamp, imperfections can actually be really cool, just depending on what you want the end product to look like. This one, I didn't bother cutting out those um, open areas in the design. I just left them the, the NinjaFlex backing because 
it might be easier to clean that way, but it doesn't look quite as nice, so we'll see. Um, either option really is gonna function just fine. It's a matter of preference, and also it's a little easier not to have to cut out that center spot once we get to the next stage of adding the foam cushion. So here's all the different versions I did. There's just very slight variations um, of just of the amount of material flow and whatnot, just trying to see if there were any better settings to have no cleanup or less cleanup, but it's just not that hard to go in there and clean up any little bloopy areas with the wood burner. Now again, especially on the text here, you get just a few little stringers and then the R's, <laughs> the letter R, didn't wanna come out clearly in this. It kept filling in the hole, so I just added that hole back in. So I'm cleaning all of them because I want to try stamping all of them, give them a fair comparison to see which one prints best. Since they just don't take that long to print for something so small, it's not a big deal to do a couple of versions. The time consuming part is actually creating the 3D model that can really take some time to get it just right. So let's give these a test. I went ahead and got a couple of, couple of different kinds of ink here. One of these is this chalk ink and it's supposed to look a little bit more like chalk and it kind of does, it's, it's kind of cool looking. And then the other ones are just regular ink. Um, I wanted to make sure I had a nice uh, regular ink because we'll need to be stamping this on the back of the wood block so that you can see from behind which way your stamp needs to be oriented when you actually create an imprint on your paper or whatever medium you're using. So I'm discovering here that it, it does take quite a lot of force, um, downward pressure on the stamps to ensure you get a pretty good print. Uh, before they have had um, any sanding on top, you can more clearly see the actual print lines, which does look cool. It gives it sort of um, an etched wood block kind of imprint, but it's not quite right for this project. I want it to be uh, more graphic here, you know, bolder lines and whatnot. So I'm gonna actually kind of modify that a little bit here, just hitting it with the Dremel and really gently uh, to get rid of some of the print lines. You have to be careful when doing this not to take too much off any one area because if you make that area lower than the rest of the stamp, then of course that part's not going to print as well. This is also a good time if, if when you were doing uh, the wood burning section or, or cleaning off the nurbles there, if you had any areas that aren't flat anymore, those areas, again, they're not gonna print as well if there's an area that's too raised or too indented. So with the Dremel, you can kinda make sure everything is on the same level that you do want to stamp. It does kind of leave a lot of little um, like gooky sanding dust. It's not the same as on a rigid filament. It's more rubbery kind of sanding dust that wants to stick. So I kept having to go back in with the wood burner again and get out all those little bits to, to make it look nice. I don't think they'd particularly affect the print quality, but they just don't look super great. It's all messy. So let's do another test print now and see if it's more clear now that it's been sanded down a little bit and cleaned up a couple of times. It does take a little while with these little tiny ink pads, but I wanted to try a bunch of different colors. So I just bought a couple variety packs to try these out with. And that is definitely looking a lot better. And like I said, I ended up Sticking with the very first one that I printed, even though I'm doing all these comparisons here, in the end, that one really had the best look for this particular design. Now, as I'm stamping them here on camera, it's a little bit hard to push down hard enough at that particular angle without hitting my camera or whatever, so it's not as hard to stamp as it looks sometimes here when you're directly above the stamp instead of trying to stamp in front of yourself so you'll see a couple little areas didn't quite stamp perfectly. That's just because I didn't have the right angle. The stamp itself is actually working quite well. So this is the wood block I'm using. It's already got these nice routed edges here. I got it from a craft store. Uh, it, it's the perfect shape, so there's, there's no point in making more work for myself cutting my own block. You can see here, this is a commercially purchased stamp. It's just as an example, this foam layer between the rubberized portion and the wood block, it helps it to give uh, a nicer, even, more even print. So I'm gonna kind of imitate that effect. I couldn't find a um, sticky cushion material that was the right thickness and size for what I needed. So I'm just gonna create my own in just a minute. First of all, the sanding or the, the block needed a little bit of sanding. So I just took off 
any harsh edges and made it all feel really nice to the touch. Now we can add in that, that foam backing. I'm doing a, a two layer process here to get the exact texture that I want. One layer is just regular old two millimeter craft foam. The other layer is actually, it's a shelf lining sheet, but it has a really nice cushion to it that I think is going to make the perfect compromise between the slightly firmer craft foam and this material. So that's why I'm doing two layers to get the right thickness and the right texture. Now I accidentally stuck it in the wrong spot there and accidentally tore it. So just cut a new one. And we're gonna do a rough cut on that shape. We're just using rubber cement here. Well, contact adhesive, it's not exactly rubber cement. We're using contact cement to glue all the different layers together and then just trimming it up around the 3D printed part. It does take a little bit of time to get it all nice and neat. If you're not concerned about how it looks, you don't need to be quite so meticulous, but I wanted this to look really, really nice and neat as possible. So we're gonna do another test print now and as you add in layers, it gets easier and easier to imprint the piece. So once it's glued to the wood block, it's gonna be way easier. <laughs> Uh, when you have a stamp on a wood block like this, you want to add an imprint of the stamp onto the wood block itself. One, because it looks nice, and two, that way when you're going to use your stamp, you don't accidentally stamp something upside down because you can't see what you're doing. And you can use contact adhesive for all the layers on this, including attaching it to the wood block. Now, the back of this design, I found it rather amusing. It just looks like a minion <laughs> in a sombrero. <laughs> Anyways, back to serious work. <laughs> this is a little bit annoying to trim out the part in between here, but it does look quite nice once it's done. So I'm using a combination here of scissors and an exacto blade just to get everything nice and neat. Then we wanna trace the design just lightly onto the side of the wood that's gonna have the stamp glued to it. That's just so you can see where to put the glue. You don't wanna get the glue on the whole thing because then you're gonna have nasty stickiness where there's nothing on there and it's, it's gonna look worse and worse with use. So just get the glue right where you need it and put a little extra on the back of the stamp since you can't put as much on the wood itself without getting it in the wrong spot. And then any parts that didn't quite get stuck down, just go back in with a Q-tip and some more of the contact adhesive and make sure everything is stuck down just right. This is another one of those chalk colors and then mixing that with some of the regular dye ink just to see some different effects you can do with these rubber stamps. It doesn't have to be all one color. It's kind of fun to play around with the different colors. And then I've got these little teeny tiny miniature file folders. I have no idea why. I just saw them and was like, hey, that looks fun. So I'm using those for my, for my test prints here. And it is working quite well. <laughs> then I have these even teeny tinier folders. Why is there a factory making teeny tiny folders and then teenier tinier folders? I have no idea, but I found it amusing. To make the block look a little bit nicer, we're just gonna give it a faux, like fancy wood finish here, uh, as opposed to just the plain pine color. So I'm just using a kind of an orangey color mixed with some burnt umber and brushing that on, you know, you wipe some excess off. This is nice and watered down. We're just trying to get a, a layered look here, not a solid color, and then add in some sort of wear and tear looks more around the edges. Those would be darker where use would naturally make them darken with time. So we're just gonna emulate that sort of weathered look. And it's, it's looking pretty neat here. <laughs> Looks a lot better than the plain pine, right? Just some shadow areas right around the stamp makes everything look almost like a piece of art, not just a functional object, but I promise it's quite functional. So while I was at the craft store, I saw these little wooden mushrooms I couldn't resist. So I'm cannibalizing the mushroom from the mushroom stamp from a previous video, and I'm going to make a mushroom stamp with a mushroom handle. Why? Well, because I couldn't help myself. It's kind of adorable. Little tiny mushrooms on little tiny folders. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> but look how nice they look. I like those stamp pads. So I'm going to do the same effect on the mushroom just because, hey, it's, it's kind of fun and looks pretty cool and it's quite adorable. This would probably be like a good project with kids. If you've got kids, you know, just set them up with some cute little wooden mushrooms and whatnot and make, the, make themselves some little stamps and get nice and messy with a bunch of paint. <laughs> so once it's all dry, we do need to actually seal it all 
uh, because you're gonna need to rinse the stamp off as you use it and change colors and whatnot. So I've just got a nice outdoor sealer I've used on other projects. It works great, you just brush it on thinly and then any excess you can dab off with a paper towel as you go. You don't wanna put on any thick layers because anytime you try to do one thick layer of a sealer, it, it just, you're not gonna like it. It's gonna have bubbles, it's gonna have brush strokes. It's much better to do multiple thin layers as much as it can be annoying and a little more time consuming. Trust me, it's worth it. I've tried both ways. I am never happy with it when I try to do a thick coat. So I'm just, like I said, just brush on a thin coat and dab off any excess with a paper towel. And then we'll let that dry and actually just do a second coat. Two coats was plenty for this. It was nice and sealed. Um, so that means you'll be able to wash the stamp just fine without making the wood, you know, get icky or warped or anything like that. And it just looks nice, you know, nice shiny finish and whatnot, sealing all that stamping ink on there. So with this kind of project, they just kind of end up evolving, you know, <laughs> you don't necessarily set out to have it look exactly like that, but it's nice to have the freedom to just let a project dictate to you what types of finish, finishes to use and whatnot as you go, as opposed to trying to figure every little detail out ahead of time. You have a general direction and then you keep modifying that until you have the best possible version of uh, what you are working on.